a hello and smile and say right. maybe no not smile actually they will say <laughs> hello um it's a little bit different in my region because it's a lot of uh, f uh swedish speaking people so, so it's not right. as dry but um they they will say hello and then ask for your uh payment method um, and that's about it that's about it so, but if you have a 15 month old next to you going hey oh sorry sorry tom you did you weren't paying attention he doesn't go hey he goes hey hey, hey. I was, I, don't accuse me like of not because i got it wrong i was paying attention. <laughs> it's, it's a, there's just a language barrier <laughs> i don't know i'm not big on chit chat with strangers unless it's something momentous like if you're just trying to pass the time and someone wants to bend your ear, it's like no. <laughs> well, in the U.S., it's very weird because the 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 people at the store don't just say hello and smile and wish you a good day. They like ask questions and and I, which they don't expect like, answers it's supposed to. Supposed to be polite. It's I'd polite. Say yes, I know. Thirty yeah. percent of them do that. Right. The majority of clerks are fine not talking to me. Uh, yeah. Maybe. I think yeah. maybe also if you've got a French accent, they're more likely it's to possible. want to find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. What do you mean French know. accent? My my, I don't have an accent. My English is uh, yeah. Do do your American accent and see if they still want to talk to you. <laughs> I'm walking you here. Do you have one? <laughs> I've never heard the Patrick American accent. I don't, and I'm not putting you on the spot, but I would like to. No, hear it it's my. Ma one. This it's, is. I'm always talking with my. Make it, no, accent. no, don't no. waste it now. Make it a. Patrick doesn't have much of a. Make of make, make, it make it a level. Make it a uh, Patreon level. He has a much of an accent. <laughs> yes, he does. Nobody Look, would ever be like he seems American. No, but yeah. I mean, like you can. In, he's very intelligible. It's not like a heavy. Oh accent. no 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 no! Not, would you, not heavy, would you but guess, just you can you can see you can. But you know. would you guess where 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 I'm from? Yeah, I would. What? But no. I also like I've been studying. I demand French the recount. Years. We would guess you're from Maine. <laughs> I would have guessed France because, Orleans, like, next no, to Revision Three didn't. was that uh, atelier that French like. Um, oh, I I. Listen, if you want me to take a French accent, I can. Yeah, but it see, is very different. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, you have well, a hint of a French accent. But okay, but I mean, you can back off of it, but it's not gone, which is a good thing, by the way. I, I think your accent is great, but I take offense to the idea that I don't have a perfectly uh, <laughs> <laughs> discreet and uh, not discreet, but um, he's worked uh, so uh, hard. Yes, <laughs> you need to get I'm so, I'm I've worked so hard by listening to many different podcasts and watching TV shows. You sound just like Scott Johnson. Oh my god, <laughs> please no. <laughs> Patrick Beja, all American boy. <laughs> no, I'm not saying I sound American, although I mean, you, I would, you don't, I could, but I mean, you're, you're, I mean, you're, you're yes, there, as there Tom said, your American... accent is, is very, okay, here's, here, here's how we settle this. Let's do 30 minutes of technology talk. And at okay. the end of it, the, the audience can decide. All right. How best fair. I know I'm French. I think we need a, um, a, a blind study. All right. Let, we can do it. All right. Uh, close your eyes. Okay. Then, uh, Sarah, if you could read line three today, that would be lovely. I can't. And, and pay attention. It's slightly different. Oh, I put it in all caps so that you wouldn't get tripped up. Yep. Got all right. It. Here we go. In three, two. Mike N has supported independent tech news directly for about one day. Be like Mike and become a DTNS member at patreon.com slash DTNS. <laughs> This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, April 16th, 2019 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. And from the blazing hot countryside of Finland, I'm Patrick Beja. <laughs> and uh, overcast skies from Rat, I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And Roger Chang with the weather. <laughs> uh, we are going to talk about the PlayStation 5 question mark uh, a wired interview with uh, a Sony employee about what's coming next for a PlayStation console that is coming. Patrick will keep us up to date on that. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. 
We may have peace in our time, folks. This is a big one. Apple and Qualcomm have agreed to settle all ongoing lawsuits. Apple will pay Qualcomm an undisclosed amount and enter into a six-year global patent licensing agreement with an option to extend for another two years. Qualcomm will also supply parts to Apple for several years. Also known as Apple needs 5G chips. Microsoft announced its E3 event will take place on Sunday, June 9 at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It will be streamed on Microsoft's Mixer as well as other platforms. It's going to be big. They keep saying that as if they wouldn't make it big. Anyway, HTC told XDA developers that its apps disappeared from the Google Play Store, not because they're giving up or going home or not making <laughs> phones anymore, but because those apps did not meet requirements after a recent change in Google Play Store policy. HTC's Sense Home Launcher, Mail, and Re Camera apps have all returned to the store, and HTC says all the other apps that disappeared will return at the end of this month at the latest. A teaser on store.google.com now says, on May 7th, meet a new hero, which then links to a page that says, help is on the way. On May 7th, something big is coming to the Pixel universe, with a link to an Avengers Endgame tie-in promotion. The Google I.O. opening keynote takes place on May 7th. I wonder what they Ooh, have up their yeah. sleeve. Uh, what a move, getting getting uh, Disney to sponsor the tease for your phone announcement. <laughs> Well, they they got my attention. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, I kind of assumed the Pixel would be announced May 7th, but now we're pretty sure about it. Let's talk a little more about something that might be coming in the Apple Display universe. Indeed. Yesterday, we passed along some source info from 9to5Mac about upcoming iOS 13 features. Well, sources also tell 9to5Mac that Apple is working on a new feature for Mac OS 10.15, that lets users send any window of any app to an external display, including an iPad. The feature is reportedly being called Sidecar internally and will feature a new menu that has options for making the window full screen, tilling and moving to external, uh, external displays. iPads that support Apple Pencil can be drawn on when used as an external display. Ooh, that part is cool. You know, but mm. my initial reaction is like, okay, well, I don't know. You kind of like mirror your displays or work them out. Otherwise, I'm I'm using an external display with a MacBook right now. But having an iPad be an external display that could be moved to in the same way that I'm using a regular monitor for, very cool. I don't currently have an iPad that supports Apple Pencil, but especially with video editing and just, I don't know, miscellaneous stuff, I can really see that being a great extra monitor. Yeah, if anybody who's used the Luna display, which 9to5Mac mentions, uh, probably knows the advantages of this. The Luna display is a little device that, yeah, you can mirror any display to an iPad over Wi-Fi, but the Luna display takes advantage of some of the benefits of directly tying into the GPU. Uh, and this would be Apple formalizing that, saying, well, let's just make that happen without you having to use an a, a intermediary device, which I suppose is bad for Luna display sending, selling their devices if this comes, uh, but would make it so that there is another reason to have an iPad and, and use it in your work setup. And if you can use the pencil on the window that is actually a Mac OS window, I guess it's using functionality that all, already exists with uh, Wacom and stuff like that. But I wonder how what it means for the interaction between Mac OS and iOS on that level. It kind of puts uh, 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 iPad, um, UI elements, not UI elements, but uh, interaction elements on Mac OS. I wonder if if something will be working weirdly there. I think it'd probably just use the input uh, info and, and send it sure. to the Mac, but eh, yes. You know. but, mm. Security researcher Armin Sebastian posted Monday that he discovered an exploit in version 3.2 of Adblock Plus filter system, also used in Adblock and uBlock, they're similar. Under certain conditions, arbitrary code could be injected into a rewrite filter meant to block circumvention. Sebastian suggested that websites eliminate server-side open redirects or create whitelists and encourages users to switch to uBlock origin, which does not support the rewrite filter option. Adblock is 
is saying that it takes us seriously and is evaluating the risk to its customers. Sebastian also says that rewrite filters should be dropped because, quote, it's always possible to abuse the feature. Yeah, this is one of those situations where Adblock is saying, yeah, we knew third parties might be able to take advantage of that. We thought it was very unlikely, but we're going to look at this closer and see if maybe we should get rid of it. But we really like the rewrite feature. You know what? Uh, anything that can allow code to be injected, I'm not going to use. So um, I don't yeah. use Adblock anyway, but I certainly would not use Adblock if they don't fix this. Sebastian also said that he he submitted what he said was an issue to Google and Google said, well, it's actually a feature, not a bug. Um, I wonder if they'll change their stance on this now that it's become a somewhat big story. Yeah, the, the server side open redirects, I can see reasons for a website to say, you know, that's on Adblock. They, they should fix it, how they take advantage. There are legitimate reasons for us to have a server side open redirect. I also get why Sebastian says, yeah, but it's fundamentally less secure. Um, that one, that one I'm willing to take more of a, of a intermediate view on versus Adblock's rewrite filters just aren't secure. Don't use them. Hackaday.com has an excellent article about how 5G service could impact weather forecasting. Let me explain, if I may, uh, although you should read the full article for a better understanding of this. Weather satellites use radiometers to measure microwave radiation, uh, which, among other things, is used to measure the amount of water vapor. You look for uh, reflections or emissions of microwave radiation from water vapor to estimate how much of it is in the air. That's one of the major factors in forecasting weather. The 23.8 gigahertz spectrum is very useful for measuring water vapor and also happens to be very close to where many 5G services will operate. That could lead to faint water vapor signals being lost in a sea of 5G noise if 5G isn't kept narrowly within its band. A lot of times spectrum is a little messy. It's not as nice and neat as it looks on the map. In fact, DirecTV broadcasts previously have shown up reflecting off water and swamping out other water vapor data. So removing water vapor data could reduce forecast accuracy by 17%, which could be significant. Uh, 5G licensees are required to limit their out-of-band emissions, but the frequencies are so close, nobody can be certain how much error there may be. And once 5G services are up and running, companies may be reluctant to, to want to adjust if there's no immediate harm that they can see, which there wouldn't be. Like any particular forecast isn't going to be provable to suffer, but it would lower the accuracy of forecasts over time. Great. Just what we need. Meteorology that works less well because of 5G. <laughs> I mean, 17% isn't nothing, no. but how I, I know that's not exactly what it how it works one to one, but it seems that meteorology has improved a lot in the past 20 years. Um, does that mean that we would go back to the level of accuracy from, you know, three years ago? That would seem acceptable, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm also <laughs> guessing there are some, I, yes, it's not how it works, but. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is like, yeah, if weather forecasts have gotten more accurate over time because we've had more data and amongst that data is water vapor data. And right. if suddenly water vapor data disappears, well, they're gonna be less accurate. Uh, Hackaday points out a, a demonstration of what the forecasted path of Hurricane Sandy would have been without the access to the water vapor. Oh, data. okay. And, so this is a good it, this is know, a good example yeah, of and yeah, where that would actually it would it would come you know today my weather forecast I asked my my assistant and she was like 40% chance of rain. Didn't rain, but you know, 40%, <laughs> okay, you know, it was like whatever. But if it but if it had to do with a natural disaster, then that is actually something that would factor into this in in a in a much bigger way. Yeah. That's that's where I was going. I think there are some uses that are not just should I get an umbrella, but could actually have scientific, important scientific ramifications. So. And it's the kind of thing that a carrier can point out and go, well, show me where the harm was today. Because, you know, OK, so your 60 percent chance of, of rain wasn't exactly accurate. So what? Why should I have to fine tune my 5G? I don't know. Hmm. Well, a Wired feature by Nicholas Thompson and Fred Vogelstein describes the past 15 months at Facebook. Among the revelations are the are that Instagram co-founders Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger 
didn't agree on the app's future and left Facebook in September because of that. Supposedly, Zuckerberg pulled out many of the ways Facebook sent traffic to Instagram, like ads and linkbacks, in order to keep people inside the, quote, blue app, as they call it. Systrom and Krieger also supposedly objected to hamburger menus, unfolding icons, and other design and functionality issues. Oh, you hamburger don't menus. Say. No one, no one likes hamburger menus. Everyone hates people. them. I hate the hamburger menus so much. Well, I, I obviously this is not the most important part no, of I, this. I think it's because it's it's bad design because you just put an actual menu instead of designing uh, a graphical UI. Uh, and you hide it, and it's just a, a text menu, and I think that's bad design. I'm not a designer, but that's how I understand it. I mean, what's funny about this is that, well, it's not really funny, but it's what what's interesting about it is that, okay, so apparently, you know, if, if, if the article is to be believed, the way that it's laying out what the Instagram founders did is that Mark Zuckerberg was funneling traffic back into Facebook rather than giving it to Instagram, even though Instagram has been the most successful app it's ever been and continues to grow at a rapid pace as far as at least um at least users worldwide so you know i'm i'm not i'm not totally sure you know how much that it was more of a it's the principle of what you're doing that we don't like and we're out of here and maybe just the fatigue of having worked at facebook for some time now i mean they you know facebook acquired instagram what in 2012 mm. uh so it's you know it's 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 probably, you know, for as wealthy as you would be as an Instagram founder working under the Facebook umbrella, the blue umbrella, as it were, for this long, you know, to walk away. I, I don't know how mad you'd have to be or if you just kind of were ready to do it anyway. Yeah, I'm sure that's part of it. That's a, that's a really good thought, which is you're you're probably half out the door already. And if you're like, well, look, I get that you want us to help bolster Facebook's traffic bleed but come on like that that's not satisfying for me so bye. yeah i guess i'm gonna leave yeah not Way gonna go away mad i'm just going away <laughs> <laughs> and i'm mad yeah <laughs> Uh, Motley Crue, I believe. Mm. Uh, Waymo launched Waymo One, the app for its robo taxi service in Phoenix. And this is interesting because it's on the Google Play Store and it's finally public. Previously, Waymo One and its companion app were only available to people in its early rider program. We've talked about that in the past. Waymo hasn't given specific numbers on who's using the now public service, says it's in the hundreds. But there are some limitations. The app has a wait list. So if I download it and I'm in the Phoenix area and I'm ready to go, I, after being accepted, still go into Waymo's early writer program. Then I'm moved into the public service if I, I don't know, act accordingly. Once in the public service, I can then invite other guests. I can take photos of my ride and, you know, talk about the whole experience publicly, which I'm sure a lot of people want to do. But it is a, it is a step forward for Waymo. You know, in the context of us talking last week about Ford saying, eh, this isn't happening as fast as we might have thought with Uber pulling back for multiple reasons, Waymo has sort of been the canary in the coal mine to say, OK, is uh, is our autonomous cars going to come as fast as we thought? Uh, and I'm not sure how to interpret this, because on the one hand, it's making an app public, which is a forward step. On the other hand, it's just making an app public. It's not in any way changing the a number of riders in the public program or expanding the service area or anything like that. I think, you know, it's definitely not uh, a fully launched program. But over the past, I would say, couple of years, we've had to, well, with Waymo especially, it was always like, sure it's autonomous cars but it's in a gated community or but it's limited to beta testers but it has it and as things have evolved i apologize in advance for this terrible pun but we've had less and less buts um which it's not really a pun but it says buts <laughs> so it's funny um so <laughs> we've had less and less buts. And at this point, there are still a few caveats, but um, it's it's still progressing. I think it's a sign of progress. Even if it's slow, it's significant because many others seem to seem to not be progressing. 
Yeah, a TVZ gun uh, in our chat, uh, and I know for a fact he lives in this part of Arizona, says, uh, I live in the part of Phoenix where they've done the Waymo testing, and those vans are everywhere around my town. So um, they certainly are present on the roads out there in Arizona. Hmm. Well, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. Rich, Sarah, or myself, once a day, give you a five-minute update, keep you up to date. Okay, Sony system architect Mark Cherney confirmed to Wired that a new PlayStation console is coming, and he even detailed some of the things that are in it. Patrick, tell us about it. Yes. Uh, so Ma Mark Cerny is the uh, essentially the, the hardware architect for the PlayStation 4, which is the most successful uh, console this generation. Um, it, it was an interesting timing for the announcement because, because they didn't give anything that is incredibly unexpected. Uh, on the contrary, most of the things they're talking about are quite expected, um, but it's also at a time when it's not going to make a big splash. So it seems to me like they're getting some stuff out of the way um, for whenever, which is probably going to be in a long time, uh, they're going to announce the more interesting new and different things. Um, so I think there are three uh, different areas in which we can summarize their uh, announcement. The functionalities are uh, backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4, which was expected, but still good to hear, and the PlayStation VR, meaning your existing VR headset for PlayStation will be usable on the new hardware and potentially uh, get kind of improved functionality because the computing power of the new device is going to be higher. So that's interesting. Uh, it will support 8K, 8K, so that's really future-proofing, but uh, it will run in 4K for the foreseeable future, and it will still have physical media. So you will still be able to use disks uh, in on that device. Again, not very surprising. Yeah, they they didn't make it clear whether it would be Blu-ray or or some advanced version of Blu-ray or anything. But but honestly, that's you know devil's in the details there. I think most people were just concerned: Am I going to be able to go buy physical media and play my games? Because that's the way I prefer to. We've heard from a lot of those sorts of people, so that's good news uh, that they'll be able to. And if it's backwards compatible, presumably it'll be backwards compatible to handling the current discs that you have. I find the backward compatibility part of this the most fascinating because it does imply to me that even though they're going to call all this something else, it really is just an evolution of the PlayStation 4. They're not doing such a, a change of architecture and operating system that they have to port games over. It's it's following, it feels a little more like a PC evolution of like, hey, it's still a computer. It can still run stuff. Uh, so it should be able to run your old games. And they've been bit by a uh, specific architecture in previous generations. PlayStation 2 and 3 especially had very diff complicated architecture and hurt the backwards compatibility. We knew it was going to happen for both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 because they shifted to very PC-like architectures. So it's not very surprising on that front. Um, I was just okay. going to make a, a, a comment about 8K too, because I know a lot of people will just dismiss that as like, who cares? We don't even have 8K TVs, but eventually you will. So that's to me, that's a, a sign that they're forward thinking. Although he probably mentions it in this uni in, in this interview to sound impressive to people. Yes and no. I mean, these these uh, devices usually have a lifetime of about 10 years from launch to retirement, uh, and it's not going to launch this year. So it will probably still be around in in 2030. And when you look at it like that, you're probably going to be happy that it already is 8K compatible. Yeah. Uh, the internals are also somewhat uh, expected. AMD custom chip with a Ryzen uh, CPU and Navi uh, GPU, which is capable of ray tracing, uh, that latest uh, graphics technology that N NVIDIA introduced with the uh, RTX series of graphics cards. Uh, the 3D audio is a, is a thing they pushed really hard. Cerny talked about it as a big evolution that we hadn't seen in previous generation. Um, the way uh, Wired describes it is as uh, being able to emulate presence. So that seems like a, uh, a significant evolution of the 3D capabilities of audio. 
Uh, but the thing they're pushing the most is a really fast SSD, which will decrease load times by a significant amount. Uh, the, exim the example they give in Spider-Man decreases a, a specific load time from 15 seconds to less than a second. So it's not just your run-of-the-mill normal SSD. It is uh, significantly faster. But he also um, implies that it could create uh, different design opportunities because you don't need to load any, you don't need to account for the time to load anything into the memory, which could be interesting and could fizzle out. Yeah, I honestly, the solid state drive stuff is the most impressive as far as changing the performance. It's the least interesting to me though, because I'm like, yeah, of course you, you you should do that. That is absolutely, <laughs> why would you not do that? Uh, the 3D audio is, is befuddling to me uh, only because I'm not quite sure what it is, but the way it's described in this interview makes it sound pretty great. You know, I, 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 sorry to interrupt you, Tom. Yeah, yeah. I, I have the same question. If I'm wearing headphones and there is 3D audio or at least something that seems that way, okay, that sounds cool. Got it. You know, instead of stereo, there's, there's, you know, but would it apply to like a 7.1 surround sound system if I had that anyway? So I think the way they, this is pure speculation on my part, but I think what they're uh, uh, implying by this is having uh, uh, more powerful 3D modeled audio systems uh, uh, engines within the game that won't need to translate to, you know, uh, uh, standard 7.1, but will actually position the audio more precisely in the 3D world with, and with have fewer, that yeah, with 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 more simplistic speaker setups. I, or, I or think headphones. so, but also the, they they specify that it will to get the ideal uh, um, uh, performance in that regard. You will need a headset, and that's how it will shine the most. So, I yeah, I still have questions about that as well. Um, yeah. I do want to mention about the. SSD that uh, they acknowledge you can already put an SSD drive, an SSD, in your existing uh, console today. And they're saying th that gives you slightly faster load times, maybe a third of what exists now. What they're talking about for this next generation console will be dramatically faster to the point that it impacts development. Um, so that's worth it noting. Be because they have a better driver for it then? Because well, they'll probably uh, just move to an MVME style exactly. structure mm -hmm. instead. So one of the bottlenecks that's, with any PC yeah. is the SATA uh, bus. Sense. I mean, what's, what's really, really interesting for me, this whole, this whole thing is how, you know, it, they're really trying to kind of emphasize the technological prowess and kind of getting ahead of the curve because they think they want to, really entice people who might be having second thoughts as other companies are kind of pushing the great game streaming aspect, right? Because you can't do things like AK on games. You can't do the, you know, the ideally the, the level of audio fidelity that they're suggesting uh, with game streaming just yet. So I think they're trying to basically position it as a way like, yeah, you've heard about game streaming, but we have a system that's going to be so compelling that you will maintain, if not, you know, put a pre-order, you're going to maintain interest in your eyeballs for, for the foreseeable, you know, year to come to kind of slowly build up interest. Because I, you know, I it, one one of the things that I, I noticed with this entire layout is it's, it's a lot of technical specs, but really little on, on actual game development, which is, you know, typical. Um, but it's, it just seems like a giant tease. Like, you know, we want to get your yeah. attention now. That's what happens when yeah. you leak info to Wired in an exclusive interview. <laughs> well, but, but it definitely like, is. It, it definitely is a tease. There's no hugely substantial pieces of information. Uh, they do say it's not going to be out this year, so probably 2020, as we had guessed. And they're not discussing cloud gaming. I, I don't think, uh, you know, what we're seeing here means there's not going to be cloud gaming. I think it's coming, but they're saving those announcements for later, maybe even a PlayStation VR 2. Um, and I, I don't think they're going to be able to avoid uh, cloud gaming being an important part of that uh, new generation. Of course, they already have PlayStation now, and they're saying, you know, we're pioneers in that uh, area. We're very committed, blah, blah, blah. I think they're going to make it just as essential to the new generation as Microsoft is going to, is already doing with uh, xCloud. So 
I, I, I wouldn't take this to mean they're making this better than cloud streaming because I think there's going to be parity between the two. If you can have significantly more powerful 3D audio in the home local rendering machine, I think they have to make it equivalent in cloud streaming. Although I think Roger's got a good point that to justify buying a console instead of just gaming on whatever machine you have lying around, you want to make that machine sexy with lots of specs. Yes, but if they do end up going with cloud streaming, that's my speculation, you wouldn't need to buy the console. Um, if you if you don't want to, I don't think you get the 8K from the cloud streaming. That 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 that's where I, I totally sure. Agree. But when you do get an 8K TV, maybe by then you will be able to. I don't know. We're speculating. Yeah, I need more bandwidth too. Mm. Thanks everybody who participates in our subreddit. Lots of gaming stories there as well as others. You can submit your own stories and vote on others at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. We're also on Facebook. Got a group, in fact, facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. Gabor, who says he's writing in from the filthy shores of the Danube River. <laughs> I, was, I always thought it was blue. Uh, Gabor says, I have an Echo, a Logitech Harmony, some wireless switches, and a two-year-old boy. He's also wireless since birth. We're talking about you know the, the idea of smart assistance that was our uh, topic of our conversation yesterday. Gabor says, when he was about six months old, he used to scream a lot after his bath. Nothing new here. Some music quickly cheered him up. However, I had hard times handling my phone without any free hands. Alec say could give me a helping hand the favorite is still the dead south and hell i'll be in good company gonna look up that song as soon as the show is over combined with the logitech harmony it's very easy to mute or switch off the tv when something inappropriate is coming up or we just need a calmer environment it served as a simple toy too as my son loved pushing all the shiny buttons i'm aware of the risks but they're in balance with the benefits for now and then we got a behind the scenes email right after that uh, from him that says, I hope my previous email has made sense. I was pushed, pulled, dragged, swung, screamed upon, and even climbed on in an effort to turn my full attention towards my beloved son. But I guess what I wanted to point out is that parents often have a hand too few. Uh, and yeah, you know what? There's a, a new Logitech Harmony uh, model out uh, that has Amazon voice services built in that just came out today. Patrick, I, I assume you can you can relate. Uh Actually, for some of it, but I also don't use any voice assistants. I find them completely baffling in what I would have a use for them, um, including after reading Gabor's uh, fantastic email. So I guess my answer is I don't really relate. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, you relate the, to probably a kid uh, giving you uh, pushing, pulling, dragging, fewer or no arms. Yeah, yes. that's all of yeah, that. That's 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 son chewed up every single remote he could lay his hands on. So that was another good reason to have voice services. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> your son and my dog should go bowling. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks to everybody who, who sends us feedback every day. You make our days. And also thanks to Patrick Bejar for being here today. Patrick, let folks know what you've been up to lately. Uh, we just recorded an episode of Pixels, the gaming show that I do every couple of weeks. If you are interested in uh, more details about the PlayStation 5 announcement and other things uh, like the Star Wars game and much more, go check out Pixels on your podcast app. And uh, if you're a more casual gamer, check out MVGB, the monthly video game briefing, which we do with Scott Johnson. Uh, it's an easier listen for people who don't need all the details. Absolutely, folks. Go check it out. And don't forget that if you're not already a member of DTNS, uh, you get all kinds of perks when you become one, uh, including an ad-free feed, special episodes. We just put up a Threatwire cross post talking about the WPA3 Dragon Blood vulnerability from Shannon Morse. That went out exclusively to folks today in the Patreon feed. Uh, so be like Mike, as we said at the top of the show, and join us. In fact, if you join us at the advisor or master level today, and you stick around for three months at that level, you'll get a DTNS five-year anniversary mug or poster, depending on the level, with art by Len Peralta. That's all available at patreon.com slash DTNS. Send your feedback to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Questions, comments, bring it on. 
We're happy to have you. We're also live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. If you can join us live, it's a lot of fun. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. Bye. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Good night, Rob. Good night, Rob. <laughs> sorry, that's kind of creepy. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised more people are like, "What's that?" <laughs> uh, aren't saying that rather. Like, what? Why you guys keep saying that? All right, let's. I see don't know why you keep saying it. Oh, Rob DeMillo uh, was on the show a couple of Fridays back and mentioned to us that he listens to DTNS as he's going to bed. Mm. Uh, so it it was a joke that has remained. Uh, faux pas suggested Waymo butts. Waymo butts. <laughs> Waymo butts. Uh, peace in our time was suggested as well. Uh, uh -huh. Go home, HTC. Your truck. Oh, poor HTC. Water vapor data. Should Patrick get an umbrella? Who knows? <laughs> uh, Who can tell? Uh, I can tell you what I can get is uh, out of here to get some sleep so I can be ready for the pushing, pulling, screaming, and all the other things Excellent. that are in store for me. Well, uh, tell your lovely family hello from all of us. Uh, I will. Hey. 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 <laughs> all right. <laughs> Love you all. Talk to you next right. week. Thank Love you, Patrick. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Good night, Patrick. Good night, Patrick. Uh, we don't have PlayStation 5 is no risk. R I S C. Ha ha ha. Don't have a lot of PlayStation 5 notes, uh, titles uh, in here. Uh, oh. Face Field. Mm hmm. Mm. Uh,. How about speculation on PlayStation 5? I like that. How about PlayStation Here. 5 speculation? Speculation. Okay. With, with, with a hyphen? PlayStation 5 up a yeah. 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 That's funny. Yeah. That'll be, that way we can be like a sports drink. Uh, In what way? I don't get that. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. I thought you said the hyphen between the five, so it would be the S. No, 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 for speculation, yeah. because it's speculation on specs. Um, speaking of energy drinks, um, a friend of mine alerted me to a new Gatorade sub brand called Gatorade Flow. Ooh, that doesn't sound. <laughs> oh, sounds I like, know. Sounds well, like a fiber beverage. Get out through the focus group. Wait, I don't know. And the funny thing is that like, okay, so Gatorade, lemon, lime, some people don't like that flavor. That's the one that I like the most, but it's yellow, right? Well, the, yes. Gator the Gatorade flow version of this is a little bit more urine-esque. <laughs> Not going to lie. It's got a little orange tinge to it and it's no, disconcerting. No. I'm telling, no, I'm serious. No. You have to look it up. And I was sort of like, it's it's almost like when a, like a detergent will be like extra strength where you're like Gatorade flow because the other Gatorade doesn't flow like what what is that what well, is that had, they've had all kinds of all kinds of I know like but Gatorade it's Gatorade ice it's, and you know like I get that Gatorade rain it's, it's fresh sure but Gatorade, whatever but Gatorade flow does not sound oh, good not okay I, please stop saying <laughs> that sorry, sounds like something sorry. they give you in the hospital like, like, right before <laughs> surgery. <laughs> Or, you know, or just, ugh. there are a lot of, yeah, like there are just a lot of things where your mind goes where you're like, no, I don't want good. to talk about them. No, 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 and we won't. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, just, uh, In fact, I don't I know. Need Gatorade rain to wash myself clean. I'm just I never understood all the other I know, I Gatorade ice. I'm literally going to put myself on ice to yeah. get over this. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I know it's weird. I don't know where it came from. I, I, somebody, anybody who knows anything about, What's going on at Gatorade? Let okay, us here's, know. Here's the actual. Um, is this the ad? Lynn Pepco. What is Lynn Pepco? Let me find out what Lynn Pepco is. It's a vendor. Okay, it's a vendor um, distributor. 
This new product was created to deliver GTQ performance with a rush of full flavor, followed by a smooth finish that improved uh, drinkability. Uh, uh, Made with natural flavors, the light and translucent color has a sweet taste with no aftertaste, delivering all the GTQ performance benefits. Well, sounds like you're describing PE, but which, okay. Which GD, which's GTQ? <laughs> right, like what is that? Oh, uh, thirst quencher. Gatorade oh, thirst quencher. Oh. 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 Sorry, I didn't realize we were supposed to know that acronym. I did not know that off the top of my head. I thought that was some sort of DNA combination that you're ingesting. Also, anytime <laughs> anyone says natural flavors without describing them, yeah, I mean, you know. When you sweat, you lose more than water, says the Amazon copy for this. Good old Gatorade <laughs> flow. Oh, uh, Lord. Yeah, no, I, I, um, I, I, I had a spirited discussion with this uh, about this with with the said friend that that had sent me the photo because he was just like, this seems like something that would upset you, Sarah. And I'm like, indeed it does. But um, but afterwards, a, a, a third friend chimed in and she was like, yeah, it's kind of like Gatorade's vitamin water. It's like less um, sodium uh, rich and more just kind of watered down. And they're just right. trying to sell it. So. So, so now you know. Prefer, first of all, I prefer Pokari Sweat. Which is the actual name <laughs> of a Gatorade-like drink in Japan? Because at least it's like you sweat and you replace it by drinking this. Like yeah. it, you know. I get that it's not an appetizing name, but I right, it's that. yeah. It is it, it it is a a tool yeah. for your body. Now, I mean, it's a tool with a lot of sugar, but yes, it's a tool. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, I do want to do a little cross promotion uh, to folks who may not have heard of "Have Such a Good Day." Well, isn't that nice? The amazing uh, podcast hosted by Sarah Lane and Heather Frank, uh, because you were talking on the most recent episode about the people who get angry at you for putting on your socks after your pants. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Of which there are many, turns out. I, I, I Putting on your socks before your pants seems like a somewhat odd but perhaps, you know, personal choice where you're like, okay, I guess that's necessary. But to me, that makes it harder to put the pants on because the Wait, sock what? is providing friction. Okay. All right. So just a little background. You know, you haven't listened to the episode. You should subscribe to our show. Have such a good day. But short story, there was a whole BuzzFeed article. And, you know, BuzzFeed kind of does this, you know, as a rule. You know, they, they try to figure out, like, what upsets people for no reason. And they make articles about them. But it was it was a whole uh, sort of just hundreds of people fighting with each other on Twitter about what order you put clothes on. Now your shoes are last, yes, but it's sort of like: do underwear and socks go first? Do you put pants on before socks? Do socks go last, right before shoes? What about the I mean, t-shirt? The underwear goes first before the pants. We're gonna. We're gonna <laughs> But then well, what's next? Is it socks or pants? What comes uh, next? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like, okay, you, you know, you you have you have six articles of clothing that have to go on your body before you leave the house. Like, right. is there an order that they go in? And is there an order that would be unacceptable to you? To me personally, I'm like, no order is unacceptable as long as they all get there. I don't care. I've never once thought yeah. about pants before socks. I don't have a problem. And I'm sure I'd, uh, occasionally I've put on socks before the pants. And if, if Roger <laughs> says that he's someone who puts the socks on before the pants, I don't. I am. Like, that's fine. There's nothing yeah, wrong with that. Sure. But I, I put the socks on after because I feel like it's easier to get the pants on, especially if you have like thick wool socks in the winter or something. And right. so that makes sense to me. I don't understand people getting angry about the idea of putting stocks on after because that seems more logical to me because people want to be invested in the debate Is well it? it's it's say. also it's sort of like i don't know i mean silly stuff like crunchy peanut butter versus smooth, smooth. I, really, I really don't care what anybody eats but i'm crunchy all the way i'm not going to eat smooth peanut butter it's beneath me smooth, smooth. well fine and you can have all of the smooth that you want but yeah. you know, it's it's one course. of those things where I'm like, no, I just have I have an opinion, and it won't deviate, and everyone else is wrong. So socks before pants, or vice versa, um, has 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 struck a nerve on the internet. Turns out, I mean, what people, is your reasoning? People are mad for, too. I'm glad, Roger, that you are representing <laughs> the side of the issue. I'm curious what your reasoning for 
socks before pants is or trousers for those in the audience from the UK? Um, it's typically, it's because I, for some reason, I always just go through and pick socks first. Like I already, I, you know, like I have, I have six pairs of pants, but I only wear one, but I go through like three pairs of socks, maybe in like a day for some what? reason. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I have my indoor house socks. Okay. So yeah. Like, because I, and I only These started the socks doing that you, you're, you're using as slippers basically. Kind, yeah. They're, essentially just, they're, because, they're around the house. Yeah. Because my daughter tends to walk and eat around the house even though it's sure. not yeah. why why you put those on before the, why this means you should put them on before the pants. so so if i put socks on if i have socks already i'll take them off and i'll immediately put on ones that i'm gonna wear outside and then i'll take i'll take whatever like sweat shorts pajamas i'm wearing take them off and then i'll put my pants on does it make sense oh, i think what's fundamentally confusing me is you have a different set of pants for indoors and outdoors yes well, I mean, I do too. That's the meaning I mean, of indoor pants. I don't know. I don't. Know. Although I wear indoor pants outside all the time. Like, okay, hmm. So, so but, do, I mean, do you have like I'm like okay? Why but, you need to put the socks on first? Because you're saying, what if you already have pants that you're not changing on, and you want to change to your outdoor socks? Well, then I would just change socks. But yeah. like in, in the beginning of the day, that's not the case. But in the that's, beginning of the day, you're putting on your indoor pants. So you put your indoor socks no, on. I first. already have my pants. I either leave my jammies on or I'm wearing shorts and I don't change it because I go to sleep in them. Okay. Here's here's the way that I see this. And again, I will preface this by saying I don't care what order anything goes in. Don't care. But if you think of it in terms of layers, right? Like Tom said, underwear goes first got to go underneath yeah. something. So you got your underwear, however many articles of underwear you're wearing. Okay. Then you do like t-shirt pants, but the socks going first are good because the socks will never be over the pants. Well, it's that, but also depending on the pants or the socks, the combination, it's easier. Like for example, if I'm wearing like um, Argyle socks that are kind of stretchy and long, it's easier to pull them up before I have the pants, pants going. on. Okay. Yeah. That is the first reason I can fully understand and get behind. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. Uh, if you have long socks, and I don't wear long socks that often, so that's why I don't run into this. But yeah, that makes that makes perfect but sense. But if I, yeah. you know, and you know, m half my socks are long socks. They're like calf length. Or oh, yeah. See, I never wear calf length socks. Boom. No. Boom. B B Mr. Calf Paul. length socks? What are you doing? I mean, yeah. I I bought a lot of, there was a year I bought a lot of socks for some reason. No, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. And I'm like, are, isn't it just too warm? And don't they like kind of like fall down a lot? And Well, see, you have to get the ones with the nylon or the spandex and the elasticity oh. and they stay. Mm. It's not like the old style where they would break in the wash and then they would always slide down your yeah. feet. It's more, yeah, like it's more like a, like a compression I, sock even. You know, it's like funny. it's going to stick. I feel weird wearing pajamas outside of my bedroom. So I generally put on the clothing that I'm going to wear outside in the morning. I, and I, I spend the entire day for the most part in them. Oh well, no, I always wear jammies I, until I go out. Oh, jammies are short. I was born in the 1800s. And so I, <laughs> I have a very, I, I have well, a, I have a very yeah, I mean, you're both right. But <laughs> I mean, like, there's my... nothing, there's nothing weird about being like, eh, no one sees me. I'm still in my pajamas and there's nothing wrong about you yeah. know someone being like, I, I don't try be in my not pajamas. to go outside in my indoor clothes because you know, where I live actually we're in the entire San Fernando Valley, there's a lot of dust in the air, especially in the summer. I don't want that on my clothes and then falling well, asleep. And like then I wear my dinner jacket before dinner. Obviously I change <laughs> into my dinner clothes <laughs> evenings before I go through. So, so if I take out the trash, I will change my clothes and go dump trash, yeah, and then I'll right. change back out of them. I have occasionally taken, uh, especially now that I live in a place where the trash cans aren't out on the sidewalk uh, in front of the house. They're you know they're on along the side where no one can see me. I've gone out in my pajamas to dump some trash a couple of times. I'll, I'll, I also feel like it, and it depends on your wardrobe. But for me, it's like the difference between pajamas and like yoga wear is very slim mm, so like yeah, like literally you know like it's comfortable it's stretchy 
I would call them my indoor pants. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I would walk to the coffee shop, no problem, and look normal. Like I'm I wouldn't try about to, to go jogging. Grocery store in them. <laughs> I would like, do that. I, I would go anywhere almost. Like I mean, maybe, you know, unless it was it's like, a, like wearing shoes indoors. Like that there's a point where I don't want to bring the outside into my house, especially mm -hmm. the dirt and that whatever. Um yeah, the other thing is whatever I have where any pants I wear needs to have pockets if I go outside so I can have my oh, wallet, yeah. my keys, yeah. and my phone. Exactly. Uh, well, listen, folks, uh, we are going to uh, <laughs> say goodbye to the video. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the Netflix earnings that just came out. Uh, so audio folks, stick around. There is more to come.